Welcome back, everybody, for the final hour of episode two of Pawns and Patrons Ode to Froge Today. Mm -hmm. Let's hop right back into it. Let's hop. <laughs> hop right back into it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you've, you've thoroughly scouted the interior of this burnt out chapel with this statue to Boba Boobills down uh, along the wall. Um, so yeah, I think there's a couple more avenues for you to potentially investigate, you know. Uh, <clears throat> you remember looking from above that on that collapsed wall, there was maybe a space you could get into, but also all of that collapsed rubble looked fairly um, unstable. So um, you might have to take care. Other than that, there's uh, there's that uh, door that leads to a staircase down into the depths of the keep itself. Guy's a little excited to go down there. You know, mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. He's been trying to shoo everyone in that direction for a while now, but uh, a little impatiently, he'll be like, guys, I think, um, I think we've like, sorted this place out. There's that dungeon, and like rumor has it that's where all like the good stuff is, you know. Just like in the legends and stuff. So, uh, anyone want to go take a look at that dungeon? Barnacle just goes, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Dunatus just goes, let's go! <laughs> and marches out the door. I was like, sick! And just follows. Fantastic. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> Bran rolls her eyes and follows as well. Strange is just yeah, Agnes really... is shaking her head like. Uh... Strange is really upset that someone looted the the statue. Oh, very strange. Let's She's see like grumbly. <laughs> Little Jimmy kind of wants to impress Duna Touche because she like called him cool earlier. Now he's got to like live up to that expectation that's been placed on him, and he's like excited to live up to it. The little Jimmy will volunteer to go down the staircase first. Fantastic! Whoa. So little Dude, Jimmy like, hangs over and watches. I'm gonna I'm gonna just put your characters all together so that uh, I have them all. Now, little Jimmy, as you're going down the stair, it becomes clear to you that the downstairs in here is um, deeply, deeply dark, like pitch black dark. Oh. Um, does anybody have a source of light? Bran has a torch and Barb has a candle. The guy's got a lantern. Okay. Fedra has a torch as well. Cool. So who's going to light their light source? Lantern Hi. sounds like the most sustainable one. Mm. I suppose. Sky will hand little Jimmy the lantern. Okay. Okay. And uh, help him light it. And then little Jimmy will descend the steps into the darkness, shining the beam before him. All right, fantastic. And we've got little Jimmy Sky. Who is following Neil's characters? Who's next? I think Red Ray is enthusiastic. Okay. Uh, Dunitish is going to creep down probably in that third position then. All right, I'll take Red Ray. I'm just keeping uh, player characters together just for ease of things for right now. But once we have everybody pulled out onto the map, then I will, uh, I will shift the screen over. We've got like dynamic lighting and everything set up. So I'm gonna take Donatouche and uh, the rest of the characters up here. Mm -hmm. And then Fran the Horse Lady. Lucky Joe, who is dead. Lucky Joe's dead. Fine. And Babs. Fantastic. Then, here we are. Ta da! What? I see nothing. <laughs> it's a scroll up in the top right, I think. Oh, there yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the same reaction. I'm like, I see nothing. Did the dogs not come with me? Oh, yeah, they totally did. So let's take a look. Oh, I should like make a character sheet to those. Let's see, we've got three dogs. Steven, Anna, and Rachel. I'm going to cut 
copy and then move back over and forth. Oh, Beverly is dead. Beverly? She came to the new map with me. Although I do like the fanciful idea of us dragging her corpse around. Ah. Oh yeah, okay. A little weird. Uh, what character do you have left? Hey, I have no? Dunitush and Agnes. Uh, both of them are there on the map. Are they? Uh, oh, I, I see them. them. But I trust you. All right, fantastic. Oh, there we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, we're, we're under some other characters. Hilarious. Okay, cool. So, yeah, here we, here we have um, these stairs descending down. Now, um, as you as you continue down the stairs, the, you, you, you've, like, turned this corner and continued down, you see um, two things. For a moment, pausing on the broad steps, you see the hint of gold glimmering at the edge of your light several steps below. I don't see any of the other characters. Is that on purpose? Um, uh, same. They they might actually be hidden in the dark up over here. So hang on. Let me just like bring everybody forward. Do you see them if I bring them over into the light? Uh, I do not. We've entered different dimensions. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is yeah, little stretch. Jimmy's light set to show everybody to, to play light for all people? Does it spray? Let's see. All players see light. Save changes. Woo! I found y'all. There we go. Same. Fantastic. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like there's a passageway here. Yes, there, there's and a crack in the wall. Is there something up this way too? Are you taking a close look? Yes, little Jimmy will step before Denatush and inspect the wall. Yeah, wow. it, it's pretty easily found that mm -hmm. um, like there's there's sort of a, a crack in the structure of the stone here, um, and you can very easily work your fingers in and pry open a secret door. Ah, <gasps> I do it. And, and you can see that this, these little sprinkles of gold were trailing out of this chamber and sort of further down the steps towards the next room. Now, let me see here. I can go to the dynamic lighting layer and, oh, fortunately I can't just delete that one, but if you move in, ta-da, you can see this room in here. This one up here? Little now, Jimmy um, will greedily go after the gold. The, the narrow hall here is lined with cut stone blocks. Dusty cobwebs hang from the low ceiling, and the time itself seems to weigh heavily on this ancient place. In the far end of the chamber, a trio of upended chests rest in the shadows amidst a scattering of small coins. There are tracks in the dust that demonstrate the path of the recent looters. Hmm. How big are these tracks? Um, like normal uh, human slash uh, twisted villager size. Okay. Nothing too big, too small. Correct. And these upended chests are emptied? Um, yes. I will uh, scour the area anyway and see if anything got left behind. Where, 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 Anna, Rachel, and uh, Fran, and Bastion? I am, I am, like, just trying to find, I saw the other characters for a second, I turned away, and then I looked back, and they weren't there, mm -hmm. so I figured you guys moved somewhere without me, and so I'm trying to move. No, the and... torch just went away. Uh, yeah. As Jimmy oh, moved are. into the room, Agnes <laughs> screamed as they were plunged into darkness in the hallway. Now, uh, it, it might be valuable to have a, a second set of someone with some light. Yeah, Grolla Bless, uh, not Grolla Bless, uh, Red Rare opens a torch because Grolla Bless starts getting, you know, it's like, you know, it's really, really dark. Maybe maybe we should be going back. Um, I, I don't think standing here is very smart. And then Red Rare goes like, <sighs> and lights the torch. We've got a torch as well. So, um, uh, little Jimmy, you're, you're investigating these chests to see if there was anything left behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a couple of coins littering the floor. 
Uh, so 1d20 copper pieces, 12 copper, and Once. also 1d12 silver. Plus our 1d12, uh, 12 silver, and 7 gold. As well, little Jimmy, you can determine that um, one of these chests, like when you look at it on the inside, it's not as deep as the chest actually is. Well, it first seems like little Jimmy's there's gonna a hidden compartment in the base of the chest. We will take a look at that. But first, little Jimmy's going to split the gold with Danatouche and her. Okay. We'll take the, yeah. we'll put the 12 copper and the 12 silver, and I'll take the seven gold and hand her the larger of the half. Here. Cool. What? For being I, so brave I, as to come with me. Aww. Uh, uh, thank you. But I'm not going to keep any secrets. But I'll keep this a secret. He shrugs <laughs> and then kicks the, the box with his foot. I think there's a secret compartment here. Here, help me help it up. open it up. Uh, Dinitush is like pretty tiny, so she does like a whole body commit to like into the chest and grabs the edges to, to pull it up. What are oh. your relative luck scores, little Jimmy? And oh, Jimmy? goodness. Uh, by the way, how much money did you give me? Uh, four gold pieces, and I've got 13 luck. Okay. Uh, Plus Dune Tush has seven luck. Okay, so then little Jimmy, as you are like about to open this chest and you're like, or not open the chest, but like investigate this, uh, this hidden compartment as you're like kicking it you hear the sound of like mechanisms rattling <laughs> i throw myself on denny and get to the floor like as if uh, a fireball is about to go off yeah no i said no secrets <laughs> roll off sheepishly as no fireballs happen and go, i stumble it tripped it's just if i Dune Tush is gonna run the hell out of the room you creep <laughs> I'll Give kick me the money box and jump it on me. <laughs> embarrassedly, and try and open it on my own. What the hell is going on in here? Actually? I tripped. I swear, it's complicated. So you're you're trying to open the box? Yeah, yeah. Trying to avoid the embarrassment of a uh, last interaction and hide it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait. Where did I go? Yeah, so there's a, a false panel in the back of the chest that eventually you, you discover can slide to the side in order to open this, this second container. Um, as you slide it to the side, you hear a snick as a spring fires. Uh-oh. I need you to make a DC 15 reflex saving throw. <laughs> oh, little Jimmy. Uh Oh. A scything blade arcs out from this hidden contraption. Is this one of those places where I can burn off. a point of luck? What's that? Can I burn a point of luck? Yes, you can. I will drop my luck to 12 then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you burn a point of luck and uh, like you feel the wind of this blade as it brushes past your fingers. It would definitely have taken off a couple digits. And given little Jimmy's uh, constitution, probably would not have lasted long. Unfortunately for little Jimmy, uh, the, the trap fires and then that's it. That was all there was, just a, a, a small blade is swinging out to try to like, you know, damage anybody who tried to open this. And then you can look inside and, and take a look at what's in there. Um, fairly quickly, you identify um, that there are two silver rings set with emeralds mm. and a silk tabard stitch with this circle with eight arrows pointing outwards from within, a symbol of chaos, as well as a steel vial that uh, sort of sloshes when you shake it very gently. Oh. You said a silver tabard? Yes, like a, a silk, silk tabard. Silk, silk, there we go. Yeah. And a steel vial. Two rings, a silk tabard, steel vial. Well, this is interesting stuff. He will pocket the rings, mm -hmm. figure out what to do with those later, and then bring the tabard and the steel vial back to the rest of the party in the main hall and be like, look, look, look what I found, look what I found in the secret chest. And then out, move as, to the opposite side from Denatouche. Awesome. 
Look, it makes a noise. And he sloshes it back and forth. What is it? What is it? What's it do? <laughs> Good job, little Jimmy. Uh, well done. Uh, <laughs> he looks at the drunk uh, and hands Babs, it over to her. Babs is like, whoa, is it, is it booze? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you should give it a shot. I, uh, I open it and smell it. What does it smell like? Yeah, so there's a, a thin black liquid. Um, it smells, um, it smells pungent and a uh, floral, and um, it reminds you of um, like poppy seed cakes. Mm. Can I roll like, she's a brewer, right? So she yeah. actually knows a lot about like liquids and how they're made and what they might be made of. Can she yep. like, uh, knowledge check this somehow? Yeah, that's a very reasonable uh, check. Give me a d20 roll, and if, on a 10 plus, I'll tell you more about what this substance No! Ah, no! Very luck! Very luck! <laughs> Four? Yeah. No. But we were gonna find out so much! We might, but we might just find out like, oh, she knows this is probably like a potion, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's just Jaeger. It's yeah. Jaegermeister. <laughs> because she's a brewer, even though she's drunk, I think that one of her, like, she chooses carefully what she drinks because she likes to drink so much. So she's going to be like, okay, let me teach you something. Okay? Listen, you don't just drink stuff that people hand you. I'm going to keep this and then I'll test it and we'll find out what it is. And she puts it in her cloak. <laughs> Little Jimmy nods excitedly, taking you at face value. Yeah, great. So you've got a silver vial with uh, a black liquid in it. Is that a treasure? Yeah. Or yeah, an yeah. item? Okay. Yeah. And this and this silk tabard, it's got the symbol on it and it's got these things. Look. I don't know anything about clothes. Do Valerie we have does. anybody who does? My patron, Valerie, knows a lot about clothes. I'm sure she'd love it. I mean, I guess Fran could step forward and look at it, because as an oster, she probably sees a lot of, like, people's colors displayed on the horses. Yeah, like sigils and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, by now, I think the, the, the collectively, the group of you, and perhaps Fran and contribute some special help here, um, have identified this symbol as a, just straight up, it's just a sigil of chaos. Ah. Kid, it's just a chaos symbol. If you feel like you're, uh, you know, you feel like you're a wild child, then put it on. Otherwise, throw it to the side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We shouldn't throw such fine clothes onto the ground. Jeez. Uh, Serge today takes the, the silky <laughs> fabric. Now he's right. like collecting silky things. No, it's nice. mine. I was going to give it to Valerie. Oh. Okay, well, take good care of it. You shouldn't let it go get dirty, you know. Ugh. Jealously tucks it into a pack. Fighting over clothes, how frivolous. Hmm. <laughs> Strange, do they brushes off his silk garments? <laughs> He's just pissed because she wouldn't look good in it. <laughs> Agnes hears you but pretends like she doesn't. <laughs> Old to wear stuff anyway. <gasps> Excuse me, <gasps> young man. Nit, nit, nit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yes, you can stay the hell away from me and do do natush. All right. I guess we'll keep walking. Sure. Now yeah, you, Red Ray moves you ahead. You found this this like tight crevasse in the wall. Mm -hmm. Um. That is not the path that these gold coins are, are, are traveling. They continue down the stairs and into the next chamber. But um, this looks almost like a crevasse that's like been opened up by seismic activity. Hmm. Like it's not, it's not a crafted uh, pathway. Over there, says Red Ray. <laughs> and so she starts, down? yeah, she's going that way. Okay. Hmm. And then she'll follow you because she's tiny and spry. <laughs> Red Ray. 
you proceed down the path. Look. And it actually, oh. uh, oops, where did you go? <laughs> oh, I thought that was like the game. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm on the left now next to it. My God, you're bringing me everywhere. Yes, you're over here. Whoop. Yes, you proceed down the path until you hit, um, you hit a doorway. And let me see. Mm-hmm. Wait, I need to. I didn't key this one on the map. I need to figure out where it where 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 it has led you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, um, good. There's a strange and foreboding portal that bars your way. It's a door. Um, it's like a circular door that is circumscribed with runes, and at the center of the portal is a large inverted pentagram inscribed within a circle. Both the runes and the pentagram are set with silver and seem to glimmer faintly in the dim light of your torch. Do I read anything? Like there are the, the 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 runes here do seem to be written saying something. What is what is your uh, um, background? What's your? Redra is a herder. Profession. No, yeah. you do not. Um, does she think that maybe uh, it's a far stretch? But uh, Grolobless is a glass blower. Maybe he knows a little bit more about like runes and stones and mm. inscriptions. Um, uh, so like you can ask and, and, uh, uh, who, who is it? Who's the glass bar? Grolobless? Yeah. Um, Grolobless very quickly says like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. Simple blower of glass. Oh, well, she says, uh, then she says, Bubug Boobills, Bubug Boobills. And then I guess nothing happens. <laughs> then she <laughs> Nothing tries... happens in response to your cry of Bubug Boobills, Bubug Boobills. And then she tries to open the door. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's very heavy, but it doesn't appear to be locked. Like it shifts very slightly yeah. as you shove at it. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to just like try to brute force it? Yeah. Give me a strength check. As you as you push your froggy hands onto the door, you feel like uh, the thrum oh. beneath them. 19. You shove. Oh, this is Redra. You shove with all of your might and the stone starts to grind, but before you can actually shift the door, your muscles give out. Oh. Even so, with a 19, she thought she was so strong. Even with a 19, it's just a really heavy door. May may I get some assistance here, please? She takes out her staff to kind of create a Lever, lever effect. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally cool. Yeah. Jimmy's there; he'll help. Okay. Should I do it under Jimmy, roll? You, you also see these these like runes and silvery lines and this pentagram inside of a circle on this strange underground door in the bottom of this key. The silver lines guess? don't look anything like the ones on the tabard, though, right? Uh, no. So like, it's not the same chaos symbol, and the tabard is just sewn with, you know, uh, thread. This is like some sort of like silvery metal has been set into the stone. Mm. Uh, Dunatush is going to kind of look at all that while they're messing with the door. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't, she, I don't know if she can read it, but she's like breathing on it like she did before and like napping <laughs> on things. And... Now Dunatush is a wizard's apprentice, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You've seen runes like these before. Uh -huh. Oh, damn. Yes, absolutely. These are, this is like writing of the sort that you've read in your wizard's like uh, service. Of course, um, it says. You could maybe make it out if you spent a little time trying to decipher what it says. Hmm. Uh, I want to grab somebody's torch and dedicate some time to looking at the door then. Cool. Give me yeah, Red Red hands it over. Give me an intelligence check. Oh, nice. Whoa. That Good. means it was a 20 minus one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not only have you read this language and these runes before, 
You have read literally this piece of writing. Oh. I know this one, I know this one. It reads, the burning purge which scours the earth, the hardened glamor stilling life, the baleful storm heedless to supplication, the raging tempest devourer from within. Banes four I place upon this gate, fire, ice, storm, and hate. I will paste that into chat so that you can- Barnacles, do what you says. <laughs> oh, come on, let me copy. There we go. There it is. Hard and glamorous. I'll paste it into Twitch chat as well so that they can read it. Bane's four I place upon this gate, fire, ice, storm, and hate. Uh, Dunatush keeps like repeating it over and over again because every time she finishes or gets like two thirds of the way through it, somebody goes, wait, what does it say? And she goes, the burning purge which scours you, the heart and glamour that, so, oh, hold on, I got, everybody just listen at the same time. And we go through it again. And Redder is like, what does it mean? <laughs> I, I, yeah, so uh, Dunatush, you have read this before. Um, and uh, specifically, you have read that um, in, in, in the depths of the past, when the armies of, of law were battling against the forces of chaos, they occasionally had to seal away powerful chaos artifacts behind great curses. And they used similar magical wards to seal the magical energies and like stamp these curses into the locations they were trapped. And so, um, you think that this is a warning that unsealing this would release something? A barnacle. Uh, a dinner, excuse me. Explains very uh, like matter of factly. She means uh, that means there's a curse trapped in here. So if we open it, we'll let the curse out. And if we don't open it, the curse will stay in there forever. So I, I don't think we should open it. We should open it. So that's it. We just don't. Do anything? Grolla uh, Bless goes, exactly what I've been telling you guys is the start. Why don't we just leave while we're ahead? <laughs> Why don't we give it to the scholar? Maybe the scholar will open it. Or maybe he'll know how to open it safely. I, again, I don't know if it, sh it should be open. I feel like all of this was a lot of work to keep it shut. Well, we have to keep it, right? We found it, so we should take it home at least and then like leave it shut at home. It's, it's a huge door leading to a room. Well, we can take a door home. There's a door in my house. It has to get there somehow. Room. Good point. Uh, I mean, that's another way to look at it. I guess Grolobus just, not Grolobus, uh, Red Red just backs away. <sighs> I guess let's go the other way. She moves away from the door, takes back her staff. I'm lost now, though. Little Jimmy is not very smart. He's gonna open the door. <gasps> uh, I'm I'm moving Red Red back. So now Red Red is back over here. Uh, who else is moving away? I was I'd... just trying to find you guys, and I moved my characters to where <laughs> there was light. Uh, but I lost a dog somewhere in the process. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll see if I can find a dog. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you all back uh, in, into collection. So yes. I had two dogs, now I only have one. <laughs> and Dune Touche remained by the door. She's trying to write in the dirt in like plain common that like do not open, like big X, like frowny face, like lots of things as I guess Jimmy's opening the you door. Leave a, you leave a warning to your, your post bears. Uh, Anna, did you catch the, the poem that's inscribed on the surface of this door in Magical Rune? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, you, you come up. Do you want to hang out here or are you going to return with Red Rat? Me? Yes. Um, Little Jimmy is trying to open the door. I'll go with Red Rat. I'll, I'll move you back over. Thank so you. That can all be together. One, dog one, dog two, and Fran. All right, little Jimmy, give me a strength check. You got this, buddy. <sighs> oh, 
going to pull it with all his might. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you tell me you want to force this while your companions are continuing on, I will let you just force it. He'll try for a little while, but he'll, he's going to get afraid of the dark. So maybe two checks. He'll try twice okay. and then and then run away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still too tight. Are you using your, uh, like, uh, are you using anything to create a lever? You've only got, like, a short bow, right? I have a short bow and a lantern and a begging bowl. Yep. Um, a <laughs> begging bowl. Well, you can always try it one more time. You never know. I think, yeah, one, one more time. Why not, right? behind you. Going, don't open it. Leave it alone. But I want to know what's inside. Fortunately, little Jimmy, for all of your efforts, it's clear that this door is just door. stuck. It's not stuck. Gonna... Not hmm. my fault. Broken. Little Jimmy gets flying back over. To the you're not side. strong enough to open the door. You're probably not strong enough to deal with what's behind it anyway. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Nature just walks back to the hallway. Yikes. Touche. <laughs> he dips his head and touché. sulks at the back of the party. Didn't give her a pretty ring, but now she's just a dumb butt. Probably got cooties and shit. Yeah, I don't really get what you mean. Says Grow of Bless. Grow of Bless is down with, like, you know, people that are upset and want to hang out at the back of the party. Fantastic. Yeah, this is a really shitty experience. We should really just, like, leave them there. Yeah, it just <laughs> smells funny anyway. It smells like flowers. <laughs> it's horrible. So dumb. Mm, really stupid. All right, friends. We've returned back to the main hallway where this glittering trail of gold All is right. down forwards. Red Red starts walking. She's like, we've wasted enough time with this stupid door. You you get down to the bottom of the stairs and there's a closed wooden door. It looks uh, very normal, not uh, not obviously barred from this side. No runes. See, a good old regular door. That's what I'm talking about. And then I open it. And a fireball explodes. No. <laughs> Let's see if I can grab this and pull it out of the way. Yep. Ta-da. You open the door, and within, you see a long rectangular room with a pool of water set in the center. It's the ocean! I told you there was an ocean in here. Why do stone steps descend into a long hall? The walls on each side, left and right, are set and decorated with elaborate tile mosaics depicting foul ceremonies to horrific and baleful themes. The walls are slick with condensation and black algae. The condensation runs in rivulets and collects in a long brackish pool in the center of the hall. Now, on each side of the wall, there are murals that you can look at. I look to at the murals. The, I look at them. To the right <laughs> uh, is the top mural with, like, it looks like uh, there's sort of like an ocean and, like, someone standing on top of a large pillar and, and like, some tendrils rising from the water, um, some sort of, like, sacrifice up here. And then on the left wall, there's this uh, collection of individuals, these people with, like, animal-type heads, strangely enough, much like the villagers that you've seen, and these two heavily armored men, one with a pauldron bearing the exact same circle with eight uh, arrows pointing out of it, and um, they're each holding on to a staff with a skull topping it. A skull! A skull! Oh, like, I press it, or wait, pull, no. pull it! Don't press or, it, don't press it, don't press it! Do something! Why wouldn't I press it? She goes ahead and presses the skulls on the wall. You press the skull and it, it moves in. And, don't press um, it, don't press it, don't press it. Yes, yes, I'm pressing it, I know. Enough, it, it doesn't seem like this is like a mechanism or anything like that, but it's almost like the, the mural here is sort of broken. And if you press the skull, it's like there's some sort of like, spongy uh, root structure behind and out from behind there there comes sliding like one little silvery seed that slides out and then plop lands on the floor. Oh, that's a cute seed. She picks it up. 
it looks like it. the same. It looks like the same seeds that came spilling out of your comrades when you killed them. The ones that had turned into vine creatures. Don't eat it. I plug the seeds. It starts backing up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember that, so I'm like, well, yeah. Guess I'm not eating that for sure. Hmm. I mean, seeds go into water, though. It's true. I put the seed in the water. <laughs> okay, give me a luck check. <laughs> Uh, six. Six. Okay. Yep. You um, you 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 toss the seed into the water. Uh, the the pool is quite dark, but you can see that that there are like um. The bottom of the pool is almost like uh. It's almost like cobblestone. So there's like mounded and round stones lining the bottom of the pool. Um, that's all that you can see. I take my staff and I start, like, shaking the water and poking around the pool. Hmm. Yeah, nothing, um, nothing happens. Like, there's no, there's no, like, pressure plates in the water. Nothing comes, like, surging out and, like, grabbing you and swallowing you or anything like that. Um, now that you're all sort of in this room and looking around, uh, more clearly, um, there are four alcoves in in the the corners of the, mm -hmm. the room. Each alcove contains a single hooded robe embroidered with bizarre Ooh. sigils stitched in silver thread. The robes are like moldy and a little bit rotten, but um, like they they actually kind of look like the the stuff that these creatures uh, on the walls are wearing in fact uh one of the murals has this person standing on top of a a, a plinth I showed you those murals right no i didn't oh i should have showed oh. those to you wow but um oh, so that's super the, useful the top mural there's like a person standing on a plinth that's what that robe looks like oh Agnes kind of reaches out and touches one, like the sleeve of it, and then checks the embroidery, all that stuff. Is there mm -hmm. a tag in there? <laughs> JC Penn. <laughs> huh. Good too. Uh, Red Red takes a robe and tries it out. Okay. Yep. Like, you know, it it's a bit bulky and awkward and like doesn't fit you perfectly, but it, it slides on over your clothes and you know, it's got a cowl you can pull up and like bring low over your face, and then you can like act like a cultist and be like, "Ooh." <laughs> she does literally that. She goes, Ooh, looking at her son, who's like, oh, "Ridiculous." Yeah. Ooh, I'm the hooded, cloaked person. Are you guys scared? Whoa! What was that? Barb gets scared. Uh, Agnes is going to start knocking on the walls again, kind of like she was before, and probably is going to work her way back around to the skull, too, unless she finds something first. Um, wait, is there two skulls? There's, like, two walls with two skulls on there? Yeah. I yeah, she... um, oh, the, one, but... the one that you pushed that, yeah. uh, like, dispensed this seed was the one uh, on the staff that the two people are holding. Press skulls for... Wait, if I press it again, do I get another seed? Yes. I go on the other side and I press the other skull. Do I get another seed? The other skull does not move under your application of pressure. Oh. Um, would the rest of you please choose your luckiest character and make a luck? <laughs> Don't None play with my the beard as dispenser. It's a seed dispenser. Press the head, the pez comes out. Same, same. Nice. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Little Jimmy, it was as you enter the room, you feel a strange pull. And as you as you step further into the room, you, you just feel drawn over to this pool. Wow. Uh, as you as you step to the edge, one of the like cobblestones on the bottom of the pool detaches and rises up, and you can see that it is actually a skull. <gasps> As it rises to the surface and looks at you, um, its eye sockets begin to glow very faintly, 
and you just you feel like you should pick this skull up and Out carry it, it with you. I pick it up. Yeah. I gaze intently into the eyes. With what color does it glow? It glows with a faint green. Your color. Press for plants. <laughs> I will. Things like pushing and getting like. <laughs> I'm kind of imagining her like <laughs> pressing and then just like stacking plants somehow. Like she's getting a lot of suits going. I'll put one of each of the silver rings with the emeralds in it in each of the eye sockets. Fantastic. Now you have a skull with rings in its eye sockets. It looks very fancy. <laughs> oh. Does this really disappointed. Yet? Take the rings out, put them back in my pocket, uh, carry the um, skull under my arm. As you as you like move around the room and turn and stuff, the eyes sort of intensify and fade. Ooh. Well, let's your play the, the which way it goes game. I ignore you. Yeah. <laughs> as you as you begin like scanning with this skull, it's clear that its eyes begin glowing slightly brighter as you proceed towards the end of the room. I, I just go. I'm... You follow the shine of the eyes. The eyes start glowing brighter and brighter as you proceed down the stairs. Wait, little Jimmy, wait! Uh, guys, <laughs> I think little Jimmy's like going somewhere. Yeah, I'm following little Jimmy. Red, red, Be careful, red, red Jimmy! <laughs> little Jimmy really doesn't look little nor young on this picture, by the way. He looks like a very manly man. <laughs> so little Jimmy, um, you you proceed all the way down here. And uh, the, the glow from the skull gets brighter and brighter and brighter <gasps> until you end up on the shore of an underground sea. <gasps> I told you it was the ocean! It is literally the ocean underground. Ah, whoa! There is um, like a tall plinth of stone marked conveniently on the map, men here. It's the stone! Red River runs up to it with her cloak to reproduce and, the picture. And <laughs> the blackened water between you and the distance um, is, is still and silent. Now, out deep in the depths of the water, you can see like a ziggurat pyramid far in the distance, some hundreds of feet away. And across all of the steps of this pyramid, you see dozens of torches, and on top of it, a burning light glowing from the peak. From here, you can see dozens of twisted villagers sort of like, uh, uh, marching up the pyramid um you also see from this from this distance you can you can still see this clearly across the waters that these twisted villagers are escorting other villagers not yet transformed up to the top and as you look uh redra from the top of the the the, the plinth you see a figure at the top of this pyramid just like sparta kick someone down into the burning pit on top uh, the the Wilhelm scream echoes across the water as it reaches your ears. Does that person have the same cloak as I do? None of the people that you're seeing are wearing this cloak. No, I'm really disappointed. Mm. Now, um, <laughs> yes, uh, past this towering standing stone upon which you are currently standing, a dragon proud longship emerges from the darkness, its hull scrawled with forbidding sigils and runes that glow a sickly green in the dim light. Whoa. The ship draws to a stop some 50 feet offshore. In the distance, you can hear the beat of drums and far off wails of terror mixing with the quiet lapping of the waves. Look what I did! Barb Look takes a did. long swig. Little Jimmy will wade into the water and see how deep it gets. Ugh. Be careful, Jimmy! And Agnes Little is Jimmy. like, get away from there! <gasps> Hang on, I need to look at your character sheet. Um, Little Jimmy. Never a good sign. 
Roll 1d20 and try to roll lower than your luck. Okay. Nice. Little Jimmy, as you start wading out into the water, the cold black ink of it seeps into your clothes and starts like sapping the strength from you. But as you begin wading forwards, you see huge ripples, three of them stirring the surface of the water and lashing in your direction, converging on you. What do you do? Uh, I run back to shore. I run back to you shore. You run back to shore, and as you run away from the water, some 20 feet out, huge tentacles burst from the surface of the water. Ah! Just exploding up out of this blackened sea. Ah! Let me, let me just hide show Fran, you some the of horse lady. Is it like on the picture? Because. You know, it, it I'm like exactly like on the picture. Okay, so it's basically me standing on this little thing and then tentacles, just like the picture. Okay. Yep. Red Red feels for a second she has hope that she's controlling them. Because <laughs> she's placed like on the picture. So yeah. she says something like, Rise my tentacles, rise. <laughs> yeah. So like it's clear that they hear you, incidentally. Like they sort of like stop and twitch and like bow in your direction. And then they, they sink back into the water and you see these tendrils swimming away. And then you see them sort of like swirling around the ship in the distance. Yeah. Bring me my ship. <laughs> <laughs> Dietrich is thinking you're controlling them now. <laughs> I'm not sure, but Red is like, maybe if I pretend the whole time, it's gonna happen. <laughs> now, um, Red Red, you're Red Red, it's you who's up here, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, at the top of this standing stone, you can see that the, the top of this has actually been fashioned into a platform. There's actually stairs that wind up around the stone that you climbed. Um, there's a shallow bowl that has been cut into the center of the platform, and the bowl is partially filled with hardened red wax, and the stub of a red candle sits on top of the mounds of wax. Uh, wait, there's still a candle? So I, I tried to light the candle with my torch. Okay, yeah, you bring your torch down, it like swiftly melts a bunch of the wax, but the candle that's there quickly lights, and the ship out in the water slowly lurches into motion, drawing <laughs> it's working. and closer until it approaches this this standing stone. Oh my and like, gosh. Interestingly, like the prow of the ship is long enough and juts out far enough that it, it slides right up next to the standing stone such that you could simply step right onto it if you want. I step now, Red onto Red, the, oh, yeah. You can see that there are a number of vortices in the water as something swirls beneath, uh, sort of like circling around this dread vessel that has come at your call. What are you doing, Redra? Agnes yells. We must stop the sacrifice of the villagers. I am seizing this ship to go save them. Whoa. No. So I, yes. I guess I, I step onto the ship. That's fantastic and a perfect moment for us to end our show. <gasps> <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> But before we go, I want to just mention, you see like upwards of 20 twisted villagers across the surface of this ziggurat, and there's still something lurking in the water. So perhaps for next time, some puzzles to consider. And that's gonna be it for us today. So let's go around the table give our shout outs, tell everybody what we've been up to and what we're gonna be up to, where they can find us on the internet and what all they can watch us doing. So why don't we start with Neil? Tell you guys can something. find me at twitch.tv slash Koibu. Tomorrow morning at the same time this campaign started, we have our fourth episode of Legends of Arcadia Genesis. It's a D&D campaign that takes place at the birth of the world where people were just blinked into existence five minutes ago and are now chatting with their gods and trying to figure out what to do to save the world because it's already in trouble. Um, 
find me doing D&D stuff all the time. Jen. Yeah, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash pink where I stream every Tuesday and sometimes on Saturday with this lovely group and sometime on my own. Uh, lately I've been playing Baldur's Gate and I've been recreating old D&D characters as my Baldur's Gate characters, so it's pretty cool. I encourage you to tune in next time on Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. And I tag Anna. I don't have much coming up actually, except the finale of Knights of Evening Star for season one is next Tuesday at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on twitch.tv slash DND. That's the final episode of our um, kingdom management DND campaign that we've been doing. And we um, will talk about hopeful hopes for next season uh, on that date. So um, tune in. And other than that, I think that's like all I'm streaming next week. So wish me good rest. I tag, who hasn't gone? Rachel? Rachel. Hey guys, uh, I have a couple things coming up on October 29th. I'll be hosting another Honda head to head. Uh, that's just like a fun thing with a bunch of streamers that we do. Also, I've submitted a bunch of like video clips to like, I wanna say like people getting awards on award shows and like young girls getting involved in like esports and stuff. So I'm out there. I don't know when those are gonna play or when they're gonna show up, but the best thing to do is follow me on Twitter at Seltzer Please. And usually I try and keep you guys updated if I'm gonna appear somewhere there. But uh, I, yeah, having a good time. Got some got some family time coming up. So I'll be offline probably a little bit, but uh, yeah, I tag Steven. Awesome. Thank you all to everybody for coming out and watching us and for everybody who supported any key uh, that's really awesome. It means a lot to us that you'd come out and watch us support this uh, charity that we are also supporting ourselves. Um, as for me, you can catch me every Wednesday uh, over on twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox playing uh, some Dark Souls inspired Dungeons and Dragons in the Sunfall cycle. Before we go away today, I just want to tease our audience by showing off the, uh, the, the, the patron rules and tease a little bit for y'all. Um, so each of you own holdings that your patron can improve and expand by gaining influence as you send your uh, pawns off to do adventures. And you can use that influence to uh, assist your pawns or uh, build allies with other high power patrons or attack their holdings and reduce their power, all sorts of things like that. So I'm really excited to get into more of the patron level play 100% for sure, next episode. But for now, that's gonna be it for us today. Thank you all very much for coming out and watching us play some Dungeon Crawl Classics and we will see you in about a month's time and we will uh, sync up offline and tell you exactly which weekend in, uh, in November that's going to appear. So keep an eye on all of our Twitters. We'll see you in about a month. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching.